okay so welcome to day 12 birch tree forest now this is an interesting take to this painting right so i have not used any uh, masking fluid or also i have not used uh, any white gauze to make this painting okay so very interesting take on this particular uh, class project but then you guys all will need some masking tape for this one so the birch tree that you see in this particular painting is a result of uh, using masking tape okay so i'm really very excited to take you on this journey to paint this project this is my absolute 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 favorite i know i've been talking a lot about uh, most of my artwork that they are my favorite but believe me this one is my most favorite of all and i can't just wait to get start started with this one so let's jump right into it okay so we start by putting masking tape okay now for this one i need if you can have a little bit of a smaller masking tape right um so half inch would be broader for this one but then if you have half of a half of the half inch tape i think would be uh, perfect also um i think washi tapes the thick thin washi tapes are also uh, would be perfect for this job right so uh, what i'm doing is i am trying to put some masking tape around the paper and then they're gonna be very different in length okay so i have used couple of this size tapes um at a very random distance of wherever i thought i want to put the tapes and then at some places i have also used a half inch uh, masking tape as well right so it's up to you uh, what you want to use uh, and if you don't have masking tape that's okay don't worry about it just uh, go ahead and paint some masking fluid with your brush uh, for a tree shape okay so just block some some areas for your trees and then just do in this pattern that i'm doing right so i either you use masking fluid or masking tape uh, just go with this method and if someone doesn't have a masking tape and masking fluid don't worry about it we're gonna just make this using white gosh okay but i have not shown in this one i've only used it masking tape for this one but i can guide you how to do using the uh, white gosh if you're using white gosh but then masking tape and masking fluid is all gonna be uh, same thing Okay, I think I'm done with the masking tape. I'm just gonna cut these edges now um, so that those marks, masking tapes are not sticking out. So once you're done with uh, putting all your masking tapes, right, uh, then let's go ahead and wet below the horizon line. So we're gonna wet the paper uh, below the horizon line and uh, we're gonna paint the land first, the land area uh, at the bottom of the trees, right? So that is the area that we're gonna be painting. And then it's gonna be comparatively very dark as you have seen in the artwork at the starting rate. So once your paper is all uh, wet at the bottom or below your horizon line, let's start by dropping some Indian yellow because uh, we anyways that will be dark. So we'll follow this, so we'll do Indian yellow. We'll just cover the whole base by Indian yellow. You don't really have to drop them, but just uh, cover. So I realized I started doing this, but I realized okay, okay no, it's not gonna be working out that way uh, because the white will be visible and I did not wanted that so i started then covering the whole paper with the indian yellow so we cover the whole paper with indian yellow and once we're satisfied with the indian yellow there we're gonna drop some oranges on top of it followed by scarlet red followed by burnt sienna vendic brown or uh, even paints gray at some areas if you feel it's not dark enough right so we start with and the reason that i did not start with lemon yellow in this one because that particular bottom area is going to be absolutely darker um, rich tone of uh, autumn rather than some light tones right and that's why we started with indian yellow 
followed by oranges now the orange uh, on top of yellow we are going to do a dab dab moment because we want to show that this is these are leaves basically fallen leaves so we are going to do a dab dab moment now if even if i do dab dab uh, the paper is not looking white because i have the base color as yellow already there right it's it's, it's not going to look empty and uh, it will just lift the colors that we are now putting right so we're going to complete this orange and then once that is done we will be taking scarlet and then doing the same thing okay Okay, now let's do the scarlet uh, since our oranges are done and uh, see my paper is still wet okay it's very wet uh, and it's not has dried up if your paper has already dried then i highly recommend you to stop at that point uh, wait for it to be completely dry then do a wash of water on top of it and then start again because this is all wet and wet that we are looking and that's why they are, i always say right uh, in the starting also i've shown you in the supply section that a particular paper worth 300 JSM is actually what we need because those, those paper don't dry up, dry up early and uh, that is what is needed for us. Now if you see this is my basically uh, my brown palette that I have to cut. So we're going to drop some uh, brown. So, so this is the bond sienna that I am mixing with my Van Dyke brown and then dropping on the paper now. Okay, because I just wanted to keep it uh, darker and I think I'm using a size 6 uh, Princeton brush over here. Now see if you notice right, I don't really wash my brush when I'm mixing the brown. So I take burnt sienna, then I take burnt umber, slightly mix with Van Dyke brown and then I just use all those colors in one go without washing my brush multiple times because uh, ultimately my goal is to for them to be mixed up. Now what I actually am noticing, we want to do the sky but I can see because the paper is all wet, uh, that whole color, the orange and all these shades are actually flowing up, right? And I want them to flow up but that not that much. Uh, so I think before we actually get down to sky, it would be good if we can put something uh, below it and then incline our paper. Okay, you can do try splattering technique also, but it's a bit risky because the whole paper is wet and your splatters can go up also. So if you are very comfortable with doing that uh, splattering technique, then you can go ahead and, and do the bottom area using splattering technique also. Okay, now for the sky, we're going to take some uh, cerulean blue mixed with aqua blue color a little bit. And then we're going to go and do a sky. So if your paper is already dried up, then wet your paper and uh, tilt your paper put some some object right so i am using this uh, masking tape uh, below my paper so if you have something else then uh, use that so you have put your uh, some object me under your paper tilt your paper now drop in your selenium blue mix with aqua green and pathalo blue at some places so we're gonna do a sky right so this is the sky that we are gonna be making now because masking tape is already there for the tree it's not going to impact anything on the tree side but then uh, let's make a beautiful sky and then make sure that you're not going too down because once your blues are mixed with yellow it's gonna form that uh, green color which we'll not like right so once that is done just wash your brush uh, soften the edges if there are any hard edges being forming soften the edges and then uh, and if it is looking lighter just add some darker color so i felt like it, this is very dark light uh, going very light and once it just dried it's gonna go absolutely light so i just added some uh, darker shade so i just took ultramarine blue because it's gonna give that texture also because of this brilliant uh, feature so i thought it would be a good contrast between the sky and brown so i just made a sky a little bit darker but then i have lost all the white so i think i'm gonna use tissue now to uh, maintain some whites over the paper right so now what i'm trying to do is i just wanted to mix my blues and yellows by thin cell without even touching that area okay and then we're gonna just use some tissues to dab it and let it dry Okay, so some area that I wanted to keep white, so I'm just using my tissue. 
to dab it and uh, give that cloudy effect and then uh, leave this particular uh, artwork for a try okay so this is another way of mainly making cloud size so you can uh, try this one as well Okay, so we're gonna leave it to dry now once this is uh, dry we can start by adding more details and you'll see that once this is dry it's gonna be very lighter in shape so now you can see that it has dried up and as you can see it's very light right it has uh, gone a little bit dull uh, but now every texture has soaked in so our trees would become a main element so we can start by putting some random details over here once because it is dry and we want to still make it look like a land uh, full of fallen autumn leaves right so i am using as of now uh, scarlet red mixed with burnt sienna is that is the mixture that i'm using for making my ground as of now and then you can do some random strokes right? you can do a random strokes of grass some uh, big leaves some small leaves leaves uh, uh, you maybe you can use some uh, browns to make a stone out of it right uh, so anything that you would like to add in your foreground you can add those elements uh, over here If it has gone too dark, think about adding some yellows to it to uh, make it subtle. Uh, so it just balance it out, right? So your uh, foreground is going to be a combination of all the muddy colors, all the autumn leaves. Now autumn leaves will also have some yellow colors into it, right? So that's what we want to remember. So we're going to just bring that feeling. So it should just not look one shape because that's how not the nature looks like. Right? It has multiple shades. So we're going to just maintain those multiple shades on the foreground as well. See, this is looking so beautiful, right? So I know he, we did some uh, base colors. Uh, so now detailing, right? My most favorite part, I think, uh, detailing. And it just lifts the artwork. So this detailing is what makes the artwork beautiful. And I have, I'm basically trying to show you guys multiple ways of doing a foreground, right? So wet on wet also, you can use splattering technique if you're very comfortable doing that. Or even put like uh, tape uh, or paper on top of it and then do it, right? So now uh, the next part is because the paper is already dry and we did some detailing on top of the dried paper. Uh, the task is to remove all the masking tapes now. Okay. Or if you're using masking fluid, then you remove all the masking fluid. Okay, so once the masking tapes are out, I'm gonna, I want you guys to mix some uh, mixture or if you have violet color directly, then you can just dilute that with water and take it. I have tried to mix my crimson with ultramarine blue and then form the very lightest diluted version of violet color. Okay, and that is what I'm just trying to do on the tree. But as of now, I'm wetting my trees over here, right? So if your, uh, if your foreground is wet, your colors may get mixed up so just remember that once your foreground is all dried up then we do this kind of detailing but then we gonna have will always will be blending our foreground with the tree because they will not look like this right and then just do a very light shade of violet on top of all the tree trunks so that we can add details to it and then you just have to add it on one side of the tree right as i'm doing you can try to do one tree at a time if your paper dries up very fast i don't recommend you guys to do all at once but you're comfortable doing all at once then just please go ahead right or else you can watch now and see how i'm doing so one tree at a time would be best for
yeah so as i was saying the one tree at a time would be best for most of you and if you can see right my uh, oranges also got blended into one of the tree and i think that was okay <laughs> so you i just don't want you to worry because it's a reflection that will be casted on to the trees right so not all trees will be same now once we are done with uh putting the dilated version of violet on all the tree trunks we're gonna take paints gray and then drop in some paints gray in a horizontal lines so we're gonna just make some horizontal lines uh separated by some dis distance from left to right right to left on to the birch tree trunk But once you pick up your color pigment, right, I just want you to dab on paper towel or your cloth and then start putting those strokes on the tree and use your smallest brush that you have. Okay. Also remember the direction of your tree. Now here, uh, there are two trees that are intersecting with each other, right? So I'm focusing on the trough tree and then also trying to maintain the overlap of those trees with each other. Okay, so you're gonna make some small lines, some big lines, some dots at some places. It's a very random manner. We are gonna paint these uh, lines. Okay, so I highly encourage each and every one of you to try on a piece of rough paper before you even try out here. So what you're gonna do is lay out your wallet color. Um, on a straight line or some some shape that you wanted your tree to be in then put the paints gray right now when you see that the shadow is not looking that perfect so what i'm doing is i'm just going over on the tree trunk with the paints gray and wallet mixture a very diluted version of those mixtures So I want all of you to be very patient enough when you are doing this. So trust the process. Don't try to speed up so that it just gets messed up, right? Now the other way is once we are done doing this, I also want you to merge or blend those trees on the foreground because they are not hanging uh, without. So they are part of the ground itself, right? So what we are doing is we are just trying to blend it with the existing foreground that we have already painted. So the bottom of those tree trunks gonna be blended with the foreground so you can again pick the same color that we have put in the foreground brown yellows and reds and then try to mix it with the foreground okay so some trees are very deep some trees are not that so just uh, do it in a very random manner and then pick some browns and then put it over on top of it it just doesn't look very isolated and then even make those uh, strokes right that leaf like strokes or the grass like strokes so it just doesn't look out of the picture okay See how beautiful it is turning out right? and and the magic is still left so don't worry so keep doing what we were doing so i and my tr tree trunks are still wet and if they are not wet i just go on top of this and just do a one wash and then start with uh, putting my dropping my colors right so now if your paint is bleeding like mine bleeded i just did a quick dab on my paper towel so to remove the excess water from the brush and that is what i just want all of you to follow okay so see how i am just wetting my trunk and then dropping some wallet on top of it it should not be much and i just want to drop it on the uh, left side of the tree trunks
so once you guys are done with all the wreaths now right in our, because we have followed the same manner uh, we are gonna add spikes or branches <laughs> not really spike but then branches of the birch bur tree okay but then for those branches from where the branches are coming out that part is where it's basically joining it's gonna be very darker in shade okay so we want to put some random manner we want to put some paints gray on the tree trunk first while it is already wet so uh because it's gonna just blend in with the trees right so we're gonna just put some paints gray here and there so these areas where you're dropping your color remember that these areas are from where your tree branches will come out okay now once you are done just uh, hold your brush from upward and do some random pattern uh strokes so those will become your branches so some will be facing on the left side some will be coming from the right side some can be on the front also right so just uh, remember and then do a very random strokes and then the colors also the paint spray that we have dropped also is in a very random manner right so that is what will add beauty to it so now if you can see birch trees are looking like birch trees and those three branches are actually adding a lot of beauty to it so now you can also add some extra branches which uh, doesn't have that darker shade or darker darker connectivity but then those branches are there and then some area uh, the darker shade is there but there is no branch so basically that portion is like broken now the detailing of the tree that we have made initially right uh, which we did on wet on wet if you see that the detailing is missing on the birch tree then at some places do the detailing so not all the places will require you to do the detailing but at some plus go ahead and then do the detailing so that it just stands out okay so we want those trees to stand out from a fog background so now if you can see right the trees are a main attraction uh everything that we did at the base layer at the, is at the bottom right and now this is looking so beautiful so fantastic and I, and that's why i said right ki, this is a very interesting subject to paint and uh, it's very beautiful I love how it's done. So yeah, we are done with day 12. I hope you guys have enjoyed this artwork. Thank you for joining me in this class. Uh, I am really excited to see your class projects for this one. So drop in your class projects and see you guys in the next one.